Welcome to Microsoft Word. In this module, we will learn about Microsoft Word and the various commands and features that we can use to enhance our document. In order to use Microsoft Word, we must first open the program. To open the program, we can either open the program or launch it from a shortcut on your screen. If you have a, a Word shortcut, you can double click the shortcut to open the program. If you have Word icon set on your taskbar, you can launch by simply clicking the icon on the taskbar to open the program. If you have neither of these, you can search your computer for Microsoft Word by clicking on the search box and typing in Word. Here we go. Our app, we can click on it to open. The fourth way we can open Microsoft Word is by using the Start menu. On the Start menu, we will find a list of all of the programs stored on your computer. Here you can scroll down and search for Microsoft Word. When you get to Word, you simply click on the app icon to launch the program. Here we have Microsoft Word opened on our screen. I'm going to maximize this window so we can see it better. When Microsoft Word first opens, it takes us to the Word Start screen. The Word Start screen gives us an opportunity to figure out what we want to do. We can either start a new document, open an existing document, or make changes to the look and feel of Microsoft Word. Let's open a new document. When you click on New, you have a choice of a blank document or several document templates that have already on that have already been created that you can use. These document templates have placeholder text which you can select and replace with your text. I'm going to create a blank document, so we're going to go ahead and click here. When the word window opens up, we have a blank document on our screen and we now have the word window. The word window gives us the title bar which runs across the top of your screen. Here I have my quick access toolbar. This quick access toolbar can either be on the title bar or it can be placed at the bottom of the ribbon. To the middle, it says Document 10 Word. Document 10 is a placeholder name that can be changed when you save the document with the new name. To the end of the screen, you have the control buttons. Minimize, Restore Down, Close. Additionally, this button allows you to view the ribbons in different ways. If you click here, you can auto hide the ribbons. You have to go back to the display ribbon button to show the tabs where you see the tab names only, or you can show the tabs and the commands, the entire ribbon. The tabs each contain a different set of commands. On the Home tab, we have a number of commands that are very commonly used in Microsoft Word. Underneath the Home tab, in fact, underneath all the ribbons, we have the Horizontal Ruler and the Vertical Ruler. The Horizontal Ruler and the Vertical Ruler shows you your text area and your margins. The darker gray section here indicates your left margin, and this here indicates your right margin. This darker section here denotes the top margin, and this flashing line on your page is your insertion point. When you type or you insert any picture, graphic, object, they all appear at the position your insertion point was at. So it is always important to note the location of your insertion point. To the bottom of the screen, you have your status bar. Your word status bar shows you 
the page and the page number and the number of pages in your document how many words there are in your document your language setting which is currently set at trinidad and tobago english you have your reading mode your document views reading mode print layout view web layout view and your zoom slider your zoom slider allows you to zoom out or into your document Depending on your zoom, you will may, you may or may not have your vertical scroll bar and your horizontal scroll bar. These scroll bars allow you to move around your page allowing you to see the top and the bottom of your page or the right and left of your page. scroll back up to the top the file tab opens up backstage view now we've seen some of this before we've seen the new button and we've seen the open button we have some additional functions here this button shows information about your document the date it was created, the time it was created, the user's name. You can change the view of Microsoft Word by changing the office team. We have black, which gives us a dark, high contrast view. Or we can set it to white, which is much brighter. You can set your office team to whatever is comfortable for you. I'm going to set mine back to dark gray. You have options that help you to further customize Word. The option button allows you to turn on and off ribbons to customize your ribbons by adding or removing commands on the ribbons and additionally adding or removing ribbons themselves. Here we have the review and view ribbons turned on. We are going to turn those off and we are going to check the developer checkbox to add the developer ribbon. When we click on OK, when we look at our tabs, View and Review are no longer there, but we now have the Developer tab. Let's go and change that back. Back to Backstage View Options, Customize Ribbon. We're going to turn on the Review and View tabs, and we are going to turn off the Developer tab. And here we go, review and view. And that is the basic screen elements of Microsoft Word. Let's look at some data entry now. When you start typing in Word, the rules of English apply, the rules of grammar apply. If I start typing, Word automatically changes the first letter of the first word in our sentence to a capital letter. All right, so this is one of the few sentences that has every letter of the alphabet. When you type in Microsoft Word, Microsoft Word places the words and as you continue to type, So I have three sentences on your screen. 
when I, as I typed, I used up all the space along the line. And when I got to the end of the line, the Microsoft Word feature called Word Wrap automatically took me to the next line and continued. So, and so my text continued to flow. If I want to separate these lines, I can simply place my cursor, click, put my insertion point, and if I press enter, I have separated the two lines. Again, I'm going to press enter and I'm going to separate the lines. So now I have three lines on my screen. Enter allows you to go to another line. When you type in Microsoft Word, there is one space between each word. If you use punctuation, the punctuation marks will carry different numbers of spaces after their use, but not before. Punctuation marks go directly after the text. When you have typed your text, you may or may not make errors. For example, I would like to remove this letter S on the word jumps. I am going to click, place my insertion point at the end of the word, and I'm going to use backspace to delete or to remove the letter to the left, and I'm going to add the, the letters ED. I would like to change this P to a capital P. To do that, in this instance, I am going to remove that. Remove or delete the P. Because my insertion point is to the left of the letter or before the letter, I can remove any character to the right of the insertion point by pressing delete. And now I can put a capital P. How do I get a capital P? I can get a capital P by either holding down the cap, pressing the caps lock button and typing capital P. But once you are working in a body of text, the better method would be to hold down the shift button and type the capital P. Now that we have text in our document, I can save this document. So I'm going to go to File. And because I'm naming this document for the first time, I'm going to choose Save As. I'm going to find a location on this computer, so this PC, Documents. And I'm going to type a name for the document. Now, if you look at file name, it the first line of text that I typed comes up as a suggested name. I am not going to use that name. I'm going to remove it and type sample. My file type is Microsoft Word, and I'm going to click on the Save button. Once I've clicked on the Save button and my word has been saved, I now have the word sample replacing the placeholder default of document 9 on my title bar. If I add another line, and I want I have now added a line to my document and I want to save the changes to my document. I can click on File and choose Save to update the changes on the document. To close this document, I click on File and Close. And because only one document was open, only one page was there, when I click on the Close button, I have now exited the program. Please feel free to look at this video as many times as you need. Take your time, go through the workbooks, and should you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact your instructor via the question and answer forum at the bottom of this module or through the messaging app.